It's July 6, 1933. Baseball's first all-star game in Chicago's Comiskey Park. And the hero is Babe Ruth, who hits the first home run in all-star play to lead the American League to a 4-2 victory. It's now 50 years later, and California's Fred Lynn steps to the plate in Chicago's same Comiskey Park. With one swing of the bat, Lynn's name is forever bound with Ruth in the continuing folklore that has come to be our national pastime. Lynn's Grand Slam home run is the first in a half century of all-star competition. Another in an unending line of unforgettable moments that help us celebrate 50 years of golden memories with the 1983 All-Star Game. You're certainly correct, Mel. Golden memories of that 1983 All-Star Game. The 50th anniversary of the All-Star Game, returning to the site where it all started, Comiskey Park in Chicago. That was an interesting year, not only because the National League went in with the significant win streak, but even more importantly, there were some new faces in this All-Star Game. There were nine first-time All-Stars. And over the course of the next hour, in conjunction with Major League Baseball Productions, we at ESPN are going to be bringing you a look back at the 83 All-Star Game. When we return, we'll take a look at what amounted to an interesting first inning of baseball at Comiskey Park. Still lingering somewhere in the air, over 43,000 people welcomed the 50th anniversary game back to Comiskey Park. This time, the fans wonder if Whitey Herzog can manage the National League past Harvey Keene in the American League for a record 12th straight time. Hopeful that they can take home memories they'll cherish forever. One such memory comes with the appearance of the honorary National League captain Ernie Banks, the legendary Chicago Cubs shortstop whose 19 years of basking in the Wrigley Field sunshine is warmly remembered. Remember, too, is Joe Cronin, also a Hall of Fame shortstop, who today is acting as the American League captain exactly 50 years after he started in the first All-Star game in 1933. On this day, the fans also salute a third shortstop, Robin Yacht of the Milwaukee Brewers, the player who received the most votes in the fans' All-Star election. As game time approaches, the crowd is treated to a touch of living history when ex-Yankee Lefty Gomez and 12 other original All-Stars commemorate their appearance in the 1933 game by throwing out this night's first ball. The opening festivities are now just memories, and it's time to play ball. The American League is hoping to sweep away the unpleasant memories of 11 straight losses and it's counting on starting pitcher Dave Steve of the Toronto Blue Jays to lead the way. Steve Sachs of the Dodgers is Steve's first challenge, and the second-year second baseman starts off his second All-Star game with a slow roller. Steve's misplay is no laughing matter, and a closer look shows that the error probably came about because Steve had to throw the ball directly over Sachs' head. With Sachs now on first, Steve calmly looks in for his sign. And despite a quick check to keep him honest, Sachs takes off for second. With the crowd still behind him, Steve prepares to pitch to Tim Raines of the Montreal Expos. And Reigns, like Sachs before him, bounces back to the mound. But this time, first baseman Rod Carew loses the ball in the sun, and Sachs races all the way around from second base to score the game's first run. At first glance, the play on Sachs at the plate appeared to be close. But a second look shows that catcher Ted Simmons might have blocked the plate but he never even had the ball. After 11 losses in a row, the American League might expect these kinds of things to happen, but this year it's starting clean. 
something Steve conveys to Andre Dawson of the Expos in a hurry. Next to learn is Dale Murphy of the Braves. And finally, Mike Schmidt of the Phillies. Schmidt might be skeptical, but seeing is believing. And the crowd has just seen Steve strike out three of the top power hitters in baseball. The Nationals did score once. But Steve's strikeout spree recalls the golden memory of giant pitcher Carl Hubble, who in the 1934 All-Star Game struck out Hall of Famers Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, Al Simmons, and Joe Cronin in succession. of its own. On the mound is Mario Soto, the first Cincinnati Reds pitcher to start an all-star game since Jim O'Toole in 1963. Twenty years later, Soto comes to the game with a 9-7 record and a blazing fastball that should be a cause of concern to the American League's leadoff hitter, California's Rod Carew. Now, But Carew is playing in his 14th All-Star game. And his cool, calm, and collected manner are more than a match for the younger Soto. Carew's leadoff single brings the partisan American League crowd to its feet. And when Fred Lynn walks, the American League has runners on first and second with one out and the Major League home run leader at the plate. Rice's hard ground ball to third proves too hard for Mike Schmidt to handle, and his error loads the bases. Schmidt's misfortune opens the door for his counterpart in the American League, and George Brett of the Kansas City Royals responds with a fly ball deep to center field. Rod Carew scampers home with a tying run. One batter later, Soto gets out of the jam, but when his teammates fail to score in the top of the second, Soto is called on once again to set down the powerful American League lineup. Come on, Danny. Leading off the bottom of the second is the Yankees' Dave Winfield, a former National League All-Star whose familiarity with Soto's style seems to be to his advantage. Another former National League All-Star, second baseman Manny Trio of the Indians, follows Winfield with a ground ball to second. Trio's safe on Sachs's errant throw, and Winfield goes to third. Then, after sacrifice by Steve and an intentional walk to Peru to load the bases, Robin Yacht comes to the plate for the second time and drives a fly ball to center. Andre Dawson's throw home can't get Winfield, who scores the third unearned run of the game as the American League takes a two-to-one lead. But the inning isn't over for Soto, who must retire Fred Lynn with two runners still on. Soto succeeds, getting out of his second consecutive bases-loaded jam, only giving up one unearned run in each inning. In the bottom of the third inning, San Francisco's Atme Hamaker makes his all-star debut, and it comes against the heart of the American League lineup. Cleanup hitter Jim Rice is first for Hamaker, and on his fourth all-star pitch, Rice sends a liner deep to left field that's going, going, and it's gone. His first 
first all-star home run will undoubtedly be a golden memory. And it gives the elated American League a three-to-one lead. With everything now going their way, George Brett eagerly awaits what Hamaker has to offer him. A line drive to center gets by Andre Dawson and rolls to the wall as Brett goes all the way to third. Hamaker then gets Ted Simmons on a pop to second for out number one, but things don't get any easier when Dave Winfield comes to bat. Winfield's ground ball eludes the drawn-in infield and scores Brett as the American League increases its lead to 4-1. to By now, the crowd can sense something different about the American League's mood, and with Manny Trio batting, the Nationals are hoping for an inning-ending double play. But Trio lines a single to left as Hamaker's nightmare continues. Duck to Sensei flies to center field for the second out. Rod Carew comes to the plate for the third time in three innings. And for the second time, Carew singles, bringing home Winfield with run number five as Trio goes to third and Carew takes second on the throw. In an attempt to stop the now snowballing rally, right-handed hitting Robin Yount has walked intentionally to load the bases with the hopes that the left-handed Hamaker will have an easier time with the left-handed hitting Fred Lynn. Right, let's go, Freddy. As Lynn steps to the plate, all the pieces needed for a golden memory are now in place. For Lynn and his all-star teammates, the pressure of the moment is tremendous because they know that in the span of a few seconds, all the frustrations and heartaches of 11 years of losing have a chance to be wiped out. and second, 
And with anticipation building, third base coach Tom Lasorda offers encouragement to Steve Sachs. Sachs' ground ball single gets Ozzie Smith home from second with the National League's third run of the game. hits have given the National League new life. With attention building, Honeycutt needs an out to help the American League get out of the inning. What he gets is two on a double play the hard way. So the American League still had a six-run lead when the crowd took a break from the action on the field and welcomed a comedic all-star to Comiskey Park. George Burns who led them in a rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Okay, let's do it. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. <laughs> Buy me something that's in Black Jack. On the afternoon before the All-Star Game, nearly 30,000 fans and Commissioner Bowie Kuhn took themselves out to Comiskey Park to see the greatest gathering of stars ever assembled. The occasion was the first old-timers all-star game, and a total of 88 former major leaguers were there, including 41 Hall of Famers and 13 players from the inaugural game in 1933. It was a perfect time to reminisce, a perfect time to take a retrospective look at the golden memories that have gilded baseball's past. The All-Star Old-Timers participated in a three-inning game that was remarkably well played. And the highlight of the afternoon belonged to a former member of the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> Billy Williams, who hit a home run into the upper deck to give the Nationals a 6-5 to five win. And the crowd, a day they'll long remember. almost a memory now too in the bottom of the eighth the american league scored twice more and this time it's their turn to bring on a relief specialist to get the last three outs of the game it's up to dan quisenberry of the royals and after a leadoff walk he gets three quick outs the American League wins its first All-Star game in 12 years. So the 1983 All-Star game was history, and joining us to recap that All-Star game is Robin Yount, who was the leading vote-getter, the Gillette Award winner that year. Robin, that was quite an honor for you, wasn't it? Well, it was a, a very good feeling to know that the uh, fans appreciate your play enough to uh, give you the most votes out of uh, any player in the American League, and uh, it was quite an honor for myself. American League had had a losing record against the National League. Did you kind of figure you got the monkey off your back after that win? Well, I'll tell you, it had been a long time since the American League had won a game, and even now, the overall numbers aren't all that good uh, as of uh, recent times, but uh, it was nice to, to break a streak that had been going against us for a long time. All-Star game is something very special, isn't it? It is. It's quite an honor, like I say, to go to a game and play with the best players in the game, and uh, it's just a good feeling to go and and uh, feel like you belong uh, amongst the top players. Robin Yount, who has always belonged among the top players, the leading vote-getter of the 1983 All-Star Game. For Robin Yount, I'm George Grant. Thanks for joining us on ESPN's presentation of Major League Baseball's Greatest Hits.